Now this video was a request I actually got uh, last night. Someone had made a comment that uh, their unit is trying to find radios and wondering what recommendations I had. Told me what their budget is and said well that's all they can scrape and they know it isn't much and quite frankly I think the budget they have is considerably larger than I've seen most people have for radios. He's wondering what recommendations and stuff, what should you look for, and that type of thing. Well, first off, what radios are available for uh, potential militia patriot use? First off, the easiest to get a hold of is your FRS GMRS radios. These are everywhere. These are those little itty bitty walkie talkies that you'll find in hardware stores. You'll find them at China Mart. You'll find them at hunting stores. They're all over the place. Now, the FRS, you do not have to have a license to operate. Technically, the GMRS radios, you're supposed to. But I have a feeling very, 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 very few people ever do. Especially when you combine with the fact that a lot of FM, FRS and GMRS radios are combined now. They're part of the same unit. The difference between the two is their frequencies and their uh, range. Typically your lower channels are going to be on the FRS band. The higher channels are going to be on the GMRS band. The next most common that you would be able to get a hold of would be CB. Now, CB people think is just vehicle mounted. There is also handheld versions of CB radios. They have been around for decades. And they've also gotten smaller to the point of being small handheld radios. They are out there. So with CB, you can mount a uh, mobile unit inside your vehicle and you can have handhelds which won't have as much range that people can carry on the ground and still communicate with those vehicles. There is MERS. This one I have not personally seen too much but this is one that gets mentioned a lot especially in the survivalist community because it's not as well known. This is a marine radio as in uh, ship radio these are ones that you're supposed to have a license for and technically you're supposed to for CB but so few people ever did that uh, last I heard the FCC essentially just waived that. But uh, MERS, I think you're supposed to have a license for the last I had heard. It uh, is in a different band than the ones I've already given. They're supposed to be obviously Mobile units you can mount inside vehicles on board ships and then there's word that there is supposed to be handheld types also. I don't know for certain. I don't know a lot on those. Ham radios. These have considerably longer range. Depending on your power and your antenna you can talk around the world depending on the atmospheric bounce. Those you can find models that can be mounted in vehicles, models that are handhelds including a pack type radio. I've seen a few of those going back decades. I know I've seen advertisements in magazines back from the 70s that showed ham radio sets that were carried on a uh, shoulder strap at your side for people that were going up into the mountains and that stuff that may potentially have problems. So. You have your base stations which can be uh, put in at home or wherever required. Those you're going to need an external battery where these you're going to need primarily an internal battery unless it's vehicle mounted then you have essentially an external. But hams, you, the vast majority of those you are going to need an external battery source. It could be the power from your outlet, a generator, some type of external large battery pack. FM and AMs. 
those definitely you have to have by law a license to use. Can you have those without having the license? Yes, as long as you do not transmit, as long as you are in listening only. Hams, I should mention, if you don't already know, you have to have a license to operate on those also, but same concept, you can own the, own the equipment, use it in a listening mode where you're not transmitting, and you have the equipment. Once something happens, the whole do you have a license or not kind of goes out the freaking window. Now, these would be shortest range. Next up in line and range, next up, next up, and then that's your most powerful. Are there other types of radios out there? Yes, there are. You, st you also have UHF, VHF, uh, VLF, and there's a few others along with microwave and that stuff. Considerations for your radios. First off, be realistic. What is your needed range? If you're only communicating with an element that is smaller than platoon size, you do not need to be contacting someone on the other side of the world. So guess what? Your FRS, GMRS, maybe CB is the way to go. If you're larger, up to company size. While your FRS, GMRS, especially the GMRS, will help with uh, longer range, but your AMs and your FMs will definitely assist with that larger operational area. I'm guessing MERS would also, I'm just not too uh, familiar with it. CB, you can also get good range, but it depends on your power source and your antenna, and your antenna must be tuned properly. A lot of people don't know this, but CB antennas that you buy in the store are not tuned. What tuning means is you're getting it to that optimal range for that radio with the uh, metal that's around it. Uh, you're mounting a CB on a car, you have obviously a lot more metal on the vehicle and you're trying to get the antenna to work properly with that giant metal mass the power that's being put out by the radio and all that can you still transmit without it being tuned yes people do it all the time obviously because they don't know about it but you're not going to have as good a range after you get realistic on how much range you need to cover, that's when you're going to be thinking about your cost. You're going to be looking at what's available, how much does stuff cost. And you're also then going to be considering availability. You may find one that's the perfect cost that meets your range, but can you realistically get a hold of it? And then this one is something that should be considered for survivalists, militia, patriots, and everyone. Ease of repair. You're out in the field, you're doing combat operations, your radio breaks. You're not exactly going to be sending someone back to buy a new one at a store. Or jumping online, using an iPhone, and getting a new one off of Amazon. So someone your combo specialist must be able to repair it and repair it easily or as easy as possible. Now we'll talk about the big uh, gorilla in the, in the room with radios in the militia movement. Mr. Baofang, or Baofang. Everyone pronounces it different. These are Chinese-made radios. That particular one is a UV-5R. There are two particular models you typically see used in the militia. The UV-5R is the most common. That seems to be the one that every unit uses. The next one after that is like a UV-8 or UV-8R, something like that. 
The UV5R, from what I've been able to figure out, is like a 5 watt radio. The, the 8 is an 8 watt. So, slightly different than the power. Your 8 is going to have more range. Now, what comes with it, or should? You're going to get a stubby antenna here. Not the greatest, but guess what? It works. It's recommended you get a different antenna for your radio, something like this. That's like a uh, 8 inch. Don't ask me to model numbers because I brought the wrong notebook with me out here for doing this uh, video, so I can't give you the specifics on it. Your 8 inch will work just fine for your uh, 5 watt. There is a 15 inch. I don't really think it pairs that great with the 5R. I personally think the 15 inch would work a lot better with that uh, 8, that 8 watt. So we got the 8, 8 inch for the 5R. You also should, when you get your radio, make sure it comes with a detachable battery pack. And you know what? Get a spare. Because you know what? One's always going to end up having to get recharged and you're still going to have to use your radio. So have a spare battery. Now, since we're talking about charging, what else are you going to need to have that is supposed to come with the radio? Your charger. Now, if you get a uh, radio that is complete, someone did not strip the damn thing when it came into the U.S. and they got a hold of it. Another thing that will come with it is this little mic slash earpiece that plugs into the radio. Now, why am I mentioning this? Because there are a lot of people, and you'll come across them on Amazon and eBay, they strip the damn radios. They get a hold of the packs from China, from whatever importer, and they strip them, and all they sell is just this unit. You have to buy your, rate, your uh, battery separate. You have to buy your antenna separate. You have to buy your charger separate. They took them out of the box, sell each piece individually, and make a shit ton of money doing it. When you get a radio, make sure you get all the accessories with it and make sure you get a backup battery or two. There is for this, and I have not experimented with it yet, that's why I'm not showing it. There is a battery pack that someone makes that uses AA batteries. So, you can have these. Well, if you got no way to uh, recharge them in the field, if you have that backup battery pack that takes the double A's, you can put that on here on this radio and run it off of double A's. I do not know how it affects the range. I do not know how long, if it, how long it affects its service life. I have not been able to test that. Now, something that I've talked in the past with people about the uh, bale fangs and the militia. First off, these would probably work for your squad radio, your platoon radio, and then for communicating with, say, a company, maybe that's where your 8 watt, your UV8, whatever, can be used for communicating with the company. And then especially if you have the 15-inch uh, antenna, or potentially some type of uh, retrans cable type antenna that you can uh, hang from a tree. No, I don't have specifics on that either because that's all in my notebook which I do not have with me. Now, issues. One thing that has annoyed the piss out of me the militia has been getting pushed to Baofeng radios for years. Why? Why is it 
that the militia keeps getting told they have to get Baofeng radios. Because that's something I wonder about. And I know someone's going to make the comment of, well, you can't buy those after October whatever of 2019. Yes, I've heard that, but that's not the issue. These are Chinese-made radios. They are cheaply made radios. My suspicion is that there is essentially Terminator chips or Terminator software inside these radios. What that means is someone can send out a code by satellite and fry out those damn radios. Another option is there is some type of tracker inside that radio. You may not be transmitting, but that radio may be transmitting without you realizing it, giving away your location by GPS. Something like that can be done, put inside the software coding, and you would not even know it. Because none of us goes in there and looks at every line of computer code that's inside these radios. So I have a suspicion these radios are deliberately designed to be fried out. And I suspect there's some type of tracker in them. Something for you to consider. Now, should a militia have them? Unfortunately, yes, because they have become kind of a standard across the unit, or across the uh, militia movement. Now, what are the recommendations a militia should look for for radios then? First off, look for American-made if possible, possibly Japanese-made. Could uh, Terminator uh, software and chips be inside them? Yes. Could trackers be inside them? Inside them? Yes. One way around that is you get older technology. Stuff made in the 80s, stuff made in the 70s. Stuff that's older. That'll still have your uh, the range you need and that type of stuff. And you know what? The older stuff is typically going to be easier to maintain and repair than this because the components are going to be larger. They're going to be easier to work with, easier to repair in the field. And depending on that radio, it may run off of your uh, D-cell batteries or a 9-volt battery. Now, I have heard that some militia movements or some militia units do use military surplus radios including man packs now the issue with those outright you have to have the right model of battery for that radio and that battery has to work one way around it people that were trained in the military to maintain those radios their communication specialists reportedly there are adapters that have been created for a lot of the older military radios so that they create an adapter pack that you can put in D cell batteries in and you can then run your military surplus radios off of those packs but you're probably saying well once the uh, D cell battery is dead it's dead a way around that you have a solar recharger unit to recharge those batteries. So that's where it comes into making sure you have at least one set of spare batteries per radio. Preferably three to four. Because who knows how long it's going to take to recharge in the field off of the sun. Because guess what? It gets cloudy once in a while. So you may not be getting that uh, number two set of batteries recharged within for the next day. 
you know, you might have to move on to set number three or set number four until the sun comes out and then they can start recharging those battery packs. Things to consider. So. But one big thing I want you to always remember with radios, be realistic on your range. You want to transmit at as low a power as needed. The higher the power, the larger the range that you have on your radios, the easier it is to locate your radios and locate where you are every time you transmit. Uh, something I should mention, there are FRS and GMRS that are dual antenna. They have little Rhino antenna right next to their main antenna. Those have GPS. A big issue that we came across in the military before it came out, people were purchasing those and they thought it was so cool that the squad leader could look at that radio pull out his and he could see where everyone else in his squad was or in his platoon was that was using a similar radio. Well guess what? Something they found out in Iraq? The enemy would get a hold of those same radios and then be able to locate where each American element was. So the safety message came out, don't use those because they are actively transmitting your GPS locations at all times. So do not get that. Do not get those. Make sure if you get a FRS GMRS radio, you do not get one that has that uh, little rhino mount antenna on the side here, that little stubby antenna that has that GPS in it or is GPS capable. Don't get it. That is a huge, huge, huge problem for you. They, the enemy can use that, locate where you are, and take you out slicker than shit. Okay? You don't even have to transmit with that radio for the enemy to know where you are because it is actively transmitting at all times. I don't care if you tell me that, well, you can just tell it, to, tell it not to by, by hitting this button. It is continuously transmitting your location. Always. That's why the military tells their people, don't get those. They said it's perfectly fine to use the regular FRS, GMRS, but do not get the ones that have that GPS capabilities. And because I know that that stuff is out there, and that's been out there for almost 20 years, I suspect it's included with your Beofang radios, and your position is constantly being transmitted through the regular antenna. Because having that secondary mini stubby antenna on there would be too obvious. Hopefully this uh, helps you out a little bit. I know it ain't perfect. Uh, you're probably wondering, well how is the militia unit I've been in in the past and that stuff dealt with having bale fangs it, with the possibility of the uh, terminators and GPS stuff in it. We used to or highly encouraged carrying a second radio inside our assault packs, inside our rucksacks with the batteries removed that we could switch over to. So we would have some of these especially for operating with other militia units but if something were to ever occur, these things, the antennas would get pulled off, the battery packs would get pulled out, and they would get packed away inside our rucks, and we would pull out that uh, backup radio would then become our primary radio for operations. And potentially at different times, we would swap out and use the Beofang once in a while also just to uh, throw your uh, enemy off. So, always have a backup. And it doesn't hurt to have a backup for your backup. Now, for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember, SAONs.